American Riviera Orchard continues to be an epic train wreck so far for Meghan Markle. The marketing, branding, strategy, all of it is in the toilet at this point. It's so unclear what this brand stands for, what this brand is going to do, but we've gotten a little bit of a hint. Five weeks almost post-launch. And that is that, yes, she is going to make jams and maybe sell them. Or maybe not because she created apparently 50 and she has given them to her friends. But of course, you, the general public, aren't going to get any of those 50. Why? Because they're gone now. And so what does this mean for the future of the brand? I just think at the end of the day, this brand is going to go down in history as one of sort of the most epic train wrecks you could possibly imagine because she seems to make every single branding mistake she should not be making. And of course, the jam release is no exception because this is something that should have happened months ago. So we're going to detail sort of the absolute disaster that this is, how she continues to make mistakes with her marketing campaigns and everything, because I think this is something everybody should learn about. Because if you want to start a business, there are so many great things you can do. But just don't ever, ever, ever follow the example of Meghan Markle, at least from what we've seen so far. I mean, obviously, it could turn into this wonderful and amazing thing. But you get the sense all the time that this is really being driven by amateurs. So we're going to go into this, to this today. But if you guys haven't been to Royal News Network before, my name is Brittany. I provide you all compelling royal commentary. So please smash that subscribe button. And I do have an upcoming trip to the Christmas markets in Europe. So this will be right before Christmas. So if you want to get a little bit of the holiday cheer over there in Europe and be back right before Christmas, we'll be going to Germany and the Czech Republic. And so we'll be doing Dresden, Berlin, and Prague. And those are some amazing cities, especially Prague is well known for being very well preserved post the Second World War. Germany got bombed pretty hard, especially in Berlin and Dresden. But not only will we be looking at the Christmas markets, but there'll be opportunities to go to museums. We, fingers crossed, the plan is to go to the Green Vault where they have all these diamonds. There's also some palace tours that we can get a part of that aren't on the regularly scheduled tour. So if you guys are interested in that, there'll be a link down below. I also have a relationship with Ana Lucia Diamonds because yes, we are talking about brand relationships today. But I want to tell you about one that is awesome, which is Ana Lucia. I love their jewelry here. I have the ring and the bracelets here, which I'm absolutely loving. And I also have their earrings and a necklace too. So if you guys are interested in that, I'll link what I'm wearing down below. And if you want to check out more of what they have, you can feel free to do that. Okay, let's talk about American Riviera Orchard. Oh my gosh, I have so many thoughts on this. When I saw the jams come out and I was like, okay, what is the most basic product that you could possibly launch? And that is jams. <laughs> so Meghan Markle apparently has gifted some of her friends, of course, not, you know, you average people out there. She's gifted her elitist friends in Hollywood, some of these jams that she probably lovingly made herself. And so let's get into some of these details because I could already pick out a couple of things here that I thought, hmm. That's interesting. And I think a bit concerning if you are running a business. So number one here, we got one of the close-up shots. And this is from the woman who is the wife of the Paramount president. So again, Meghan Markle is networking. Apparently they are also neighbors, but Meghan Markle is all about networking. So I don't think she probably knows this woman particularly well, but this is an opportunity for her to remind her that, hey, you've got a duchess in the neighborhood. Check out my jam and promote it on social media. So you immediately notice a problem with this jam is that the sticker is falling off here on the side. <laughs> so that's not necessarily a great start. And they've also obviously put as well 17 out of 50. So what does this tell you automatically is that most likely all these 50 jams went out to 50 different people, all of whom are Meghan Markle's elitist friends in Hollywood. And so the jam is gone. The jam is gone. And my, my thought is, I was like, okay, so. So she, she's launched this brand and we have zero products for it so far, zero. She's shown us, you could argue the first product, but what does it tell you as well? Well, that none of the rest of it exists. That is already gone, most likely. And so I'm like, what was the point of it? Because you want a product you can sell as, as much as you can in mass. Yes, there'll be some brands where a smaller quantity increases the value of it. I'm talking luxury, luxury. That's where that matters. So if you have, for example, if you kind of watch luxury brands, let's take Louis Vuitton, for instance, they have their staple line of products. 
So the Neverfuls, the Speedies, all those sorts of things. And then they have their summer collection, their fall collection, like in between collections where they'll add special colors, special designs, those sorts of things. Now, if you're able to get some of those, sometimes those are greater value because they have a really, really coveted design that was made in a much smaller quantity. And sometimes, though, the general products are also worth more. So they've actually changed how they're doing it at Louis Vuitton. And so that you actually have to get on a waiting list for a Neverfull because there's so many Neverfulls out there. They're trying to, like, pull it back a bit. So that's increased sort of the value probably of the Neverfull on the secondary market, although I really haven't looked personally, so I don't know for sure. But all of this to say that luxury, yes, a limited quantity increases its marketability and its value. In addition to like comic books or maybe a special edition t-shirt, like there's things that increase the value of it because there's such limited quantity. That doesn't include jam. Jam is sort of a terrible, terrible example. Why? Because anybody can make jam. Anybody can make jam. It's not that hard. In fact, I have a whole book here from the early 1900s, which I'll talk about more later, that has a whole section on every single possible jam you could ever possibly imagine. Because yes, what? They were making these way a long time ago. And they were such common that people made them all the time. So yeah, you can tell this book is very, very old and was very loved at one point. Well, and I like it too. But anyways, so because of that, like, how are you going to increase the value of the jam by saying, oh, it's 17 out of 50? Who cares? <laughs> Who cares? It's, it's sort of a way somewhat to kind of denote what batch is what batch. But at the same time, I'm thinking about it going, well, how are we supposed to get so excited? It's a 17 out of 50. You get one out of 50 shot for jam. That's, that's not an interesting proposition. And then the other thing as you look through these, is that these were given to very elitist people. Now, when you launch a brand again, you want the brand to have the greatest reach possible. And I sort of thought that's what Megan was going for because that makes the most sense. At the end of the day, that's probably going to make you the most money, honestly, is to have a brand that has a great reach. But so far, she's telling us she's not going to have a great reach because she's only giving this to the elite wealthy people. Now, will you, the general public, will you get the same jam? I don't think so. I don't think so. I would imagine, now this is just my theory, that because Megan was gifting this to her friend, she probably spent a lot of extra time on it. And therefore, it's probably was maybe made in her kitchen. She added personal touches and stuff that you won't get. So she's already establishing, I think, which is bad for her brand, that I think there's going to be something the elites get and something everybody else gets. And that's not a great strategy. And yes, some of those things work in the luxury, but it's jam. It's jam. Who cares? Because jam is something, it's kind of like candles. It's so ubiquitous. You can find jam anywhere. I can go to the market right now and get jam. I can go to my local farmer's market and get strawberry jam. I can go on Etsy and get jam. I can get jam anywhere. What makes yours so special? Now, you could just say, oh, it's from Meghan Markle. It's been sourced in Montecito. It's like, so I can get the jam that has been sourced in my area, perhaps with strawberries grown in my area. So why, why would I spend maybe an extra $10, $15 on Meghan Markle's premium jam when I can get it for $5 from a local market and support a local business? I'm more likely to do that than I am to spend the extra amount on Meghan Markle's jam. Why? Because I can still also make my jam at home. But also, I would prefer to support a small business. So this was an absolutely dismal product to tease. She also teased it way, way too late. So Meghan Markle, her brand strategy should have been. So let's look at this picture right here from Delfina, one of her friends. She was there at the polo match. This should have been the type of teaser with a little thank you, Megan, months ago. Before the brand even launched, this stuff should have been teased because she should have had this ready to go as soon as she launched her brand. But she didn't. So she let everything fester. And so this should have been the type of teaser things that we got for, let's say, the month of February into the launch of the brand in March. That's how you do teasing. You don't launch a brand, do nothing with it for almost five weeks, and then beg your friends and family to post pictures on social media so you can start to generate buzz. That's, that's not how you do things. You tease it. So like when I started and I am still sort of 
working through it. And I, I've let you guys know I'm working through it. So it's not like I would say fully, fully launched yet. And what I have, which is going to be definitely a podcast that is where, where I'm focusing at is making it a podcast that's available like on iTunes and everything, which is the crown report. That product I've told you guys about, I've teased about. And then in the members, I gave them the first access to the first full video I did. And then last week I showed you guys the full video I did. So this week I'll probably do another one. I'm hoping maybe to chat with somebody, we'll see. And so because of that, we're, we're sort of building, we're, we're teasing, we're building. And I'm not going to officially put it out there until I'm like, okay, I like it at this time. Cause I think now I might actually launch it on Friday. I was thinking Wednesday, but now I think Friday's good. So launching it on Fridays to like sort of wrap up the week. And then it's, it's gonna be corresponded with a newsletter. And then all these sorts of things that'll come together, but it's it's still a work in progress. So I'm not saying fully, and I haven't put it on iTunes yet, in part because I want to launch it. Like when I feel like, okay, this is good. I've got this figured out. I really, really like this one. Let's go with this one, which is again, probably not the best strategy either, but I know how to tease something. Meghan Markle just drops ARO after teasing that she's going to do something. And then the first thing she gives us, like the first tangible product that none of us can touch or see, except for on social media, because you know we're not special enough to see it ourselves, is jam. <laughs> All I can think of too is that friend, episode of Friends where Monica is making jam and Joey's obsessed with the fact that Monica is making jam. What is this? Fruit? <laughs> yeah, Monica's making jam. Whoa, jam? I love jam. Hey, how come we never have jam at our place? Because the kids need new shoes. <laughs> Sick and tired of being depressed about Richard. I needed a plan. A plan to get over my man. And what's the opposite of man? Jam. <laughs> and when you look at the product as well, it's like really banal. Like who cares? It's not designed all that well. And I will say the one thing that I thought was a sort of interesting ish was this right here, which is the ARO logo on the little thing where the, the topper is for the jam. But at the same time, that's probably a decent amount of money into to get that something like that produced, especially if you're making such small quantities. So I'm, I'm thinking to myself, why would you do that? Because at the end of the day, jam is jam. It's going to sell whether or not it's in a plain bottle or a fancy one. So you're sort of almost wasting money. Yes, it gives it a little bit of a nice little kitschy thing. But at the same time, you're, you're you're wasting money on something that you really don't need to put money into. It's just such a poorly thought out brand strategy. It's so poorly thought out. And the question is, where does she go from here? Because yes, we've been told she's going to create cookware and all these sorts of things. But I'm like, but, but where is that stuff? Because I put in a video, and I think this is still insanely true, that if Meghan Markle had been smart, she would have started with an idea of, I want to create X because I don't see X on the market. And I feel like there needs to be something there. So if you take the Mary Kate and Ashley Olsen example, which I did before is the row started with the idea of, we want to create the perfect t-shirt that every woman can wear and feel good in. Now it's like $700 or something, $600 or something. So it ain't cheap. But the whole premise that they've built the row around is impeccable tailoring. And so you see that reflected in the first t-shirt they did. The first t-shirt was about great tailoring. The rest of the line is about great tailoring. Now, at this point, what can you say Meghan Markle's brand is about? I don't know, because she sort of gave it to everyone in the launch, seemed to be marketing to everyone. But now it's also clearly probably just the elites that are going to benefit from this. So wh which direction is she going in? And then she's giving us something as pedestrian as jam. Jam is incredibly pedestrian. Like my grandma makes jam. She makes a, some sort of apple butter or something that she likes to make. And so people for years, centuries, decades, all that sort of thing have been making jam. So what makes her jam particularly interesting? Because the thing to me, if I see this, if and if this is the direction Megan is really wanting to go in, my question is, is why didn't she just open up a small store in Montecito and just sell these things from that small store? Like none of the rest of this makes sense if she's going to say, well, everything's got to be sourced from Montecito and everything is she's, she's got to create this, generate this interest and all these sorts of, and I'm like, 
you should have just kept it small if that's what you were going to do. Because now you've you've had the world's attention and now you're it's sort of kind of a train wreck. And everybody's looking at these things going, do I really, you know, am I going to spend, let's say, and I'm just ballparking. I have no clue what these are worth. But let's say she wants to charge $23 for her special jam because it was made in Montecito. When you could go to the grocery store and get it for $3. You could go to a farmer's market local, support a small business, and get the same thing for $8. What makes Megan's stuff so special? Because I think sometimes, and I left it downstairs. When I go to the UK, I like to get UK honey because I think it's really good. And so I got some UK honey last time. I had some the time before and I used all of it. And so part of the fun of having something special like that is buying it in the location. <laughs> when you don't buy it in the location, you buy it online, it sort of loses a bit of its touch. And I actually got it at a local market. When we were in the Cotswolds, this, this town we are staying in had an outdoor market area, like a craft fair type of market type thing. And so I got soap, I got honey. I may have gotten one or two other things. I think maybe even I got a cupcake, maybe. I think it was pretty good too. So I got those things because I thought, oh, cool. I can support local artisans. I can go check these out. Meghan Markle, I feel like, loses so much appeal of this brand because she is the one creating it and she's not a local artisan. She is not a person who's struggling to create a, their own business, who doesn't have a lot of financial resources to pull from. She's a multimillionaire in Montecito. So she loses a lot of the benefit of those kind of products just based on who she is, which again is stupid strategy. It's a really stupid strategy because I think she needs to focus more on something that is broad and appeals to a lot more people rather than something that's clearly like this should be at a local craft fair in Montecito and not maybe being sold online. Like, yes, you can sell some of those things online, but you, you understand what I'm saying. I feel like she loses so much of the appeal of the brand by sort of trying to cash in on the interest in local artisans in order to promote herself. I think that's taking away from people who spend their time, sweat, money, and tears into these businesses that they're trying to create that don't have the financial resources that she does. And again, some of the marketing here, it's like, oh, look, this is Tracy Robertson, who has multi-million dollars thanks to her husband. Thank you for the delicious basket. I absolutely love this. I'm not sure I'm sharing with anyone. Maybe that's what she's saying at the end. I'm not sure. But, you know, she has this basket. You're not going to get that. Only Megan's special friend. So again, I think she is losing so much by clearly, clearly playing to the elite. She's clearly playing to the elite with this brand and yet trying to market it like to the masses. Again, very confusing brand strategy. And apparently she is also going to be starting to film her cooking channel here soon. Richard Eden reported that it was today. So she's going to, I guess, use her own jam in the cooking or show how to make her jam in the cooking. But everybody knows how to make jam. Like not everybody, but like you can find, you know, any recipe online. You can find it even in an old book like this, a recipe, how to make jam. It's not that hard. So how is this exactly supposed to help her sell things? Because here's the thing, too. If she wants to market it to the elite, I guess that's fine. But also you you have the factor of is that you are trying to put a Netflix show out to the masses, yet you only want to appeal to a small few. So who is going to watch your show? If you're only appealing to a small group of people, how are you expecting a large group of people to tune in? Again, huge, huge questions, which is why I think overall, this thing has just been such a mess. It really has been an absolute mess. And Megan just doesn't seem to know what to do. I feel like that it's the blind leading the blind. Whoever is trying to lead this effort, it really does, does seem like Megan. And these are very poor strategies because at the end of the day, you want your branding to be clear. This is who I am. This is who I stand for. This is the type of content products I'm going to sell, et cetera, et cetera. You want a strong marketing campaign. You will get something X. These will be maybe a limited quantity, maybe an unlimited quantity. You, you sort of want to determine those things and do it accordingly. And you also want to say, I want to either appeal to everyone or really this is for a select group of people. And when you look at that, all those different things can work, but Megan has to choose something. Right now, her brand is too confusing and she's done nothing to clarify it. I feel like this launch of the, the jams 
confuses things even more. I like, I'm even more confused about what this brand is going to be about because I'm like, well, I thought you were going to do a cooking show so that you could have everybody in the world enjoy your cooking and share your products, like your cookware. Again, Megan's clear thing she should have done is like, I can't find the pan I want for a particular item. So I'm going to create X pan. I'm going to have it look X way. That should have been the first thing. And that it's in production because right now being 17 out of 50 tells me there's no more left. There's no more, there's no more of this jam left. So she's created a product that's already gone. Like that's so stupid in my opinion. That's so incredibly stupid because Megan, again, I don't know how she does it every time. She sort of shoots herself in the foot when she does these things because she should have launched this with branding. And yes, the jams may sell out. And since there's only one out of 50, maybe that makes it look like it's sold out faster, but you're only really dealing with 50 products. And at the end of the day, how much of the is the up mark from it? Because she's having to curate expensive items, which decreases her margins. Again, from a business perspective, I don't understand any of this. But I will maybe figure it out and I will give you guys an inside track as to how to make strawberry jam according to this old book. Maybe it's different. Maybe it's not. We shall see. So guys, thank you so much for watching. I really enjoy having you guys here and I shall see you guys so, so soon. Bye. Thank you.